Hi guys, back Paul here. Today then I wanted to bring you a video just to show you a new helmet I've purchased. So this is a Shoei NXR. A couple of reasons behind buying this uh, particular helmet. First is it was in a good uh, on a good deal at Sports Bike Shop website. Uh, that's a company I used to get most of my bike kit. It's currently on offer at £319.99. So that's 20% off the normal price. You can actually see this helmet for sale anywhere up to about £399. Normally it's around £380. Uh, but yeah, 20% off. So £319.99, it's a really good offer. Um, especially for you know, a premium brand like Shoei. The other main reason is this helmet, as well as everyday riding, I'm going to be using for my vlogging and video reviews. And my previous helmet, my AGV K3 SV, is quite noisy. Uh, it lets a lot of air in um, and causes a lot of interference to the noise and audio on my videos. And it's mainly down to the design of the helmet. Um, I'll show you that later because I'm going to do a bit of a comparison in this video between the two. So you get an idea of a budget helmet as opposed to a more premium one like this showy. Well, we'll go through the details first. Uh, so this helmet, it's got a multi-composite fibre shell. These are the details from the showy website. Uh, it's got a four star sharp safety rating, which is actually identical to the AGV. And in terms of uh, other features, it's got an emergency quick release system. So this allows uh, emergency uh, medical personnel, paramedics and so on to remove the cheek pads on the helmet and release a helmet in case of an accident. That's quite a critical uh, feature of this helmet, a great safety point. Obviously, you'd hope that you'd never <laughs> need to uh, use that function, but it is there. Um, we'll put an image so you can see that. It's got a double D-ring fastener, um, as opposed to the quick release style, what I call seatbelt fasteners. This is a double D-ring fastener, and it comes in four shell sizes. Uh, this is a medium that I've purchased here. And for ventilation, it's actually got four inlets at the front and one large one at the back. Um, so the front uh, inlets, if we just have a look here, they're very easy to operate. I'm just doing this one-handed. And on this side, you can see there, if you want to just put them back, they just go down easily. This one opens and closes there. And then down at the bottom, you've got one here and it just opens there. Um, that's one of the main differences between this and the AGV is how easy they are to operate. Even, you know, if you're wearing gloves, they've got to be easy to operate. If you're in traffic and you've only got a moment to kind of open those up, it needs to be quick. And on the AGV, they're very uh, stiff to actually operate. They're very difficult. And I've had that helmet a couple of years and I know a lot of other people have said the same. So it's just little points like that that kind of separate these premium brands sometimes is how easy they are and how well engineered. Uh, the the helmet is at the rear of the helmet then uh, we've got this outlet vent so show we state that this is made up of six uh, outlet vents it's difficult to see you've only got really one lever that's in the closed position just move it to the left and that's open again very easy just one movement in terms of the weight then uh, the helmet is 1260 grams so it's very light and it comes with a few accessories so you get this uh breath guard here and chin curtain there they're easy to fit um i've had a show before although it was a long time ago about 10 years ago now and it came with those i've just not fitted them to this yet but they are very easy to to install you also get a pin lock insert um you may be familiar with pin lock basically most helmets now tend to have this and this is already set up so it has this these little plastic points on either side and they're already pre-installed into the visor. And then the pin lock insert is kind of another visor on the inside of the visor. So you have to take the visor off the helmet, um, which is easily done. It's just basically one part just there. Um, you lift the visor up, push that into the side and the visor just comes off. You do that on either side. You uh, lay the visor down as flat as you can and then you take the pin lock out of its packaging again put that flat against the visor and it just fits into place slides into place on either side there's no kind of special tools or anything like that 
I'm sure there's videos on YouTube showing you how to install it, but they're very easy. And the point of a pin lock is to stop the visor misting up. It's essential really, especially in the UK. We have, you know, pretty poor climate uh, in terms of uh, when it gets to winter, it can get very cold and it's quite easy for visors to mist and fog up. And these are brilliant. I've used one in pretty much every helmet I've ever had. And the absolutely perfect no matter how cold it gets it does stop that visor misting up so you've always got clear vision you do actually get one with the agv as well but it's worth pointing out that this is included and uh, i would buy it anyway even if it wasn't included but it's a great bonus that it is included um on the sports bike shop website at the moment this helmet has a five star rating a customer rating so it's really well rated again mainly due to its features how quiet it is how easy it is to operate how comfortable it is um and you do get a, a very kind of premium quality feel with this it does come with a showy you know carry bag as you'd expect uh, again same with the agv um and it also has some kind of like silicon uh sealing liquid as well i think that's for the visor mechanism if ever needed um but it is very comfortable it's very snug i've Obviously, I'm sure that'll give a little, but it's important to get the right size. So always, you know, uh, do a measurement of your head. If you've got like a, a, a tape measure, the kind that you're getting like a sewing kit rather than a normal tape measure. Um, and there's a size chart on the Sports Bike Shop website. So we'll have a look at the AGV K3SV alongside this one. And like I say, do a bit of a comparison between the two. Here we've got the two side by side then. So this AGV K3 SV, I've had it a couple of years, um, we'll go through the specs. Like I say, it's definitely more at the budget end of the scale. At the moment, this is on Sports Bike Shop at £124.99. I think that's got 25% off at the moment. When I bought it, it was £150. And it's not a bad helmet. Um, you do obviously get what you pay for, but if you've looking at that kind of budget at the cheap end of the scale then i would still recommend it it's just having used it and now i'm looking for something a little bit quieter um i would go more for the premium but there are definitely good points about this agv helmet and there are actually a couple of features that this has over the show so um in terms of the shell it's a thermoplastic resin outer shell it's also, like I say, four-star sharp rated, same as the Shoei in terms of safety. This one has a sun visor, an internal sun visor. Um, and that sun visor, it's operated just by a little red handle there on the side. Again, that's not the easiest to do. It can be a little bit stiff, but it drops down. And obviously, if it's bright sunlight, that's quite useful because it saves you having to wear sunglasses and so on. The only negative on that internal sun visor is that it does fog up and mist very easily. It's not anti-fog. And when I purchased this helmet, that was one of the features that drew me to it was that internal sun visor. But it's not very good because it doesn't even have to be cold. Just your, uh, your own breath can mist that up. So sometimes you'll find, even if it's sunny, you'll not bother using it. Or that's what I find anyway. Um, so... Again, it depends on what your thoughts are on uh, internal sun visors, but it's not bad, but it could be better. Uh, but it's got that as a feature. It's a quick release strap on the uh, helmet rather than a, a double D ring fastener. And again, you get the pin lock included. So that's, a, you can see installed on the helmet there. Um, so that's pretty good, especially for the price of that AGV that it comes with a pin lock. The weight of this helmet is 100 and, uh, sorry, 1,470 grams. So the Shoei is lighter. Holding them, you can feel the lightness of the Shoei. It's not huge, hugely different, but it, it does definitely feel lighter. Um, and again, the differences are more in terms of the profile. Um, so I'll do a little side-by-side -side shot shortly. But it's a profile and the amount of noise that you get on the AGV, but also the feel of it. So although they're both matte black, um, this one is more of a shiny kind of glossy matte black. It feels a little bit more plasticky. This one's very kind of smooth and soft. The only issue with this one, the Shoei, is it does show up fingerprints a little bit more, but it does feel a little bit more premium. Um, 
also, like I mentioned with events on the Shoei, again, I'll just do a little demo on that. Dead easy, just straight away, no problem. On this one, I mean, if if I can really kind of push it, oh, no, no. Yeah, I mean, you can see there how difficult that is. There we are, got it finally. So they do open, but it's very difficult. And that's just, it's not just because I'm doing it one-handed there. Even when you're trying it with or without gloves, it's difficult. Um, this is easy. That just comes open easy enough. And it feels a little bit plasticky, but it works fine. So there's no problem with that. But these two here, very difficult. Um, the one at the bottom, I can just tilt this up a bit. You can actually see you've got some vents there and you might think there's a lever, but that's not um, a lever for these vents. The lever for these vents is actually on the inside. And if you just see there, you can see that opening up. The only problem with that is it's a little bit tricky when you're on the bike and you're trying to put your gloves inside the helmet to try and find that lever to reach up and, and just move that up and down. I'm not really certain why they went for that as opposed to like say on the showy. This one on the outside is just a lot easier. Um, but you know, it's not impossible. It's just a little bit awkward. This here is quite good. That basically pushes the visor up and creates a little bit of a gap uh, to let air in so it stops it missing up. And use with the pin lock, that's a great feature. Um, in terms of the visor, from the side, they're very easy to take the visors off on this AGV, similar to the Shoei. So no problem in terms of ease of use in getting the visors off. They're both very straightforward. The mechanism on the Shoei, I would say, is a little bit smoother for the visor going up and down than the AGV as well. But it's more the venting on the AGV that lets it down a little bit. Um, if we turn this one round, let's have a look at it from the back. There we go. Um, it's got two outlets here, but they're kind of like just fixed, so there's no lever in terms of opening or closing. It's more of like a mesh uh, venting system. So I can't say I've noticed that really, whether it's been effective or not. It doesn't. <laughs> it, it doesn't even become apparent when you're riding. It's just. If they work, they may well work. I just don't notice them. But yeah, there are, like I said, differences. And obviously you'd expect there to be when you're paying over £200 more. It just depends on what you're looking for, I guess, really. Here are the two side by side then. So I wanted to do a little comparison shot so you can see the profile of each helmet. It's difficult um, from a video like this because you can't really see it until you see uh, or hold these helmets in person or try them on but they are very different so the showy is very kind of round and traditional uh, helmet shape similar to an ally uh, showy and ally helmets the like I say a bit more traditional the uh, bottom of the helmet where the uh, kind of chin bar is it's not sticking out or jutting out from the top it's very aerodynamic very compact and when you try that on the cheek pads uh, like I said, from the cheek pads to the front of the helmet, it's a very small gap. Um, it will allow air in, but it's not too big so that you're getting an excess amount of air in and causing a lot of wind noise and interference. Um, again, it might be difficult to kind of see it clearly, but on this AGV, the bottom of the helmet does come out very far. Um, so even if you're getting the right size, it's just more the design of it. Um, it's very snug fitting if you get, like I said, the correct size, but you will notice it if you were to try the two on side by side that the uh, front of the helmet at the bottom, uh, the chin bar level, it's quite far extended. So you'll be nice and snug and then there's quite a gap um, from your cheeks to that front part. And obviously that's going to allow more air in at the bottom. Um, I guess they would argue, AGV, that it's aerodynamic because it's kind of swooping back uh, more than the showy, which is more kind of a circular shape. This one is swooping back from the bottom to the top. But in doing so, I don't think it's a good design just because it allows a lot more air in at the bottom. Um, you might be able to kind of see how far it kind of extends just from the profile or the shape when it's resting on the floor there. Um, so... That 
is a big point for me because again the show is for vlogging and doing uh, videos and reviews so i want it to be as quiet as possible and i took note of a lot of comments and reviews saying it is very quiet you know the agv did get good reviews it's got four and a half stars on the sports bike shop and when i purchased it at the time it was perfect for what i was looking for i was looking for more of a budget helmet um and one that had good reviews and a trusted brand because you know agv were well known make uh, Italian and Valentino Rossi wears them so they can't be bad <laughs> and I don't want to rubbish the AGV in this video because it has got a lot of neat little features um, the visor is UV treated it's fog resistant as well as having the pin lock included and there's nothing particularly wrong with it but I think when you see the side by side with this premium helmet uh, showy and RI like I said they're more the premium brands I believe it kind of highlights the differences more because you can see with the vents how easy they are to open on the showy. Um, the kind of shape and the style of the showy should mean it's quieter. And I just get you just get a feel that it's a little bit more uh, quality. Uh, the the feel of it, the style of it, and the way everything operates, it's really well engineered. And I think the AGV is obviously built more to a budget, and it is two hundred pound less, but there are notable noticeable differences uh, however i guess it does depend on what you're going to be using the helmet for you know are you just uh using it for uh, short journeys on a scooter are you going to be touring are you going to be using it on track um so it will depend on your budget and your intended use really also you know if you're buying a bike or you've just purchased a bike you may have spent a lot of money but you might want a new helmet something like the agv would probably be ideal because it's not going to set you know your bank balance back too much and you are getting a good brand it's got the same kind of safety rating but it is worth uh pointing out the differences so the showy, like I say, it's on a good offer at the moment. I'm not, as you know from my previous videos, endorsed by a sports bike shop. I know I kind of big them up a lot um, on my videos, but that's just because I purchase all my gear from them. They're always dead easy to use and you get the free delivery and the returns are no problem. So um, that's just my experience in using them. If you find the showy at a decent price elsewhere, then, you know, go for go for wherever you can find it. Um, but I've never had any problems with them. And... Uh, the price that the show is at, at the moment, I would say it's definitely worth it. And it also, um, you can get finance uh, through them. So when I added this to my basket, the show, uh, it wasn't available on 0% because they do do 0% finance. However, um, if you add other items, because I also bought some RST trousers, then that bumped up the price and then it triggered the 0%. I actually called them on the phone and they said, yeah, there are kind of limits um to the price i think it's obviously if you get something ridiculously cheap you know if you're buying something for 50 pound they're not going to let you pay it off monthly but there are limits in place so if you buy the show on its own you may not be able to get no percent but if you add something else onto the order then it should let you do that that is obviously personal preference you know i've just opted for the no percent um just based on this time of year it was on a good offer but just before christmas it gets expensive with everything else that you need to get over Christmas. So I just thought I'll pay it off monthly. Um, I'm not paying any extra interest, so it's just an easy way to do it. Uh, but yeah, it's on a good deal. I can't obviously recommend it in terms of how it feels when you're riding the bike. That's something I'm going to do later. This is just my impressions video, but hopefully at some point soon, I'll be able to bring you another video after I've taken it out and tested it. Um, and we'll, uh, you know go from there so hopefully you found this video useful um if you got any comments then uh please ask away if you want to give it a like and subscribe to my channel and we'll put some videos on shortly so thanks for watching